AI agents connect to MCP servers to gain new functionality and abilities, but working with them can be tricky. You have to run these servers locally now, meaning that you have to download the code and then edit configuration files so that the server starts when you start a client application like Claude Desktop. Wouldn't it be better if we could just connect to a remote MCP server without having to actually download any code ourselves? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna learn today. By the end of this video, you'll know how to deploy your own MCP servers to the cloud in less than 10 minutes. We'll use an example MCP server that checks to see if domains are available. Here you can see Claude using it when I ask for confirmation that digitalocean.com is registered. First things first, we'll need an MCP server to deploy. You can build your own MCP server for this, but if you want to follow along with this video exactly, you can feel free to clone the DO Remote MCP Server Template repository in the DO Community GitHub organization. This repository, and indeed this workflow, was created by my colleague Amit Jatwani, so make sure to follow him if you want to see some other cool projects. I've already gone ahead and cloned this repository on my system, um, so let's take a quick look at the server code itself. So there are two versions of the MCP server, one for running locally and one for running remotely. So we'll go ahead and take a quick look at this local one right now. First things first, we create the fast MCP server. And then going down, we have this domain checker. So this class defines the objects that actually check to see if a domain is available. So up top here, we just have some configuration settings. And then down here, we have this check domain availability function, which does the bulk of the work here. The checker actually uses two different methods to see if a domain is available. So the first is a whois lookup, and a whois lookup gives you the registration information for a domain. And then the second is a DNS resolution check. So this will perform a DNS query to see if the domain name resolves to an IP address. Uh, moving down here, we determine the overall availability for the domain. So if the registration information says that this domain is available and it does not resolve, then we can go ahead and assume that the domain is available. If the whois information determines that the domain is not available, then we will assume the domain is not available. And finally, if the whois lookup says the domain is available, but the domain resolves to an IP address, then we're gonna go ahead and remain ambiguous. Next, we have the two functions that actually perform these lookups, but that's out of scope for this video. And then down here, we initialize the domain checker and we create our MCP tools. So here we use the MCP tool decorator to denote these functions as tools for the MCP server. And the function just uses that check domain availability method to check the domain. And then it maps the availability to a string. And additionally, it provides a more detailed response with all the results in case the LLM needs it. And then going down here, we define another tool. And this does the same thing, except it just checks multiple domains instead of just one. And then scrolling down to the bottom, we have our main loop here and we just run the MCP server. So now we have our MCP server. How do we actually deploy it? The MCP landscape is changing quickly, but historically, it's been a little bit difficult to deploy them to the cloud. This is because remote MCP servers used to use server sent events, which can be blocked by firewalls or suffer from caching issues in CDNs. MCP has deprecated server sent events in favor of streamable HTTP with the option to use server sent events. But thankfully, DigitalOcean's infrastructure works with any of these transport methods, meaning that you can deploy your servers regardless of your choice here. To deploy our MCP server, we'll be using the app platform which allows developers to quickly deploy their applications without worrying about underlying infrastructure. And the best part here is that there's no special configuration required. You can just deploy them like any other application and it'll just work. So let's deploy this server now. Log into DigitalOcean and then select the app platform. From there, go ahead and click Create App and then scroll down to choose your deployment source. So here, this repository is in GitHub and I'll select it from the drop-down menu here. Select the repository branch you want to deploy. In this case, we'll just use main. And then you can go ahead and specify your source directory. If you're following along with our example, you can go ahead and leave this blank. Next, you can choose whether you want to auto-deploy every time a push is made to the branch you specified. So we'll go ahead and leave that enabled and click Next. Now we can go ahead and configure our resource here. So here you can go ahead and change how much RAM or bandwidth you need. And then go down and define the build and run commands. So here we're making sure to install the requirements when we build, and then to run, we run the domain checker file using Python. Scrolling down, we have our network settings and then our environment variables. Our public port is set to 8080, so I'll go ahead and add that as an environment variable for the program. Scrolling down, you can choose the region that your server is deployed to, and then go ahead and pick a unique name for your server. So here I have domain checker MCP server. 
Over here, we can see the cost estimate for this application is gonna be $5 a month. And then we can go ahead and click Create App. And that's it. As soon as we click that button, our application will start building and it will be ready in just a minute. Once the build is complete, we can go ahead and copy the link to our application. And now we can test it with the MCP Inspector. MCP Inspector is a tool that allows you to test out MCP servers, use their tools, and examine their resources. To run the inspector, you'll need NPX, which you should have installed if you have Node installed on your system. To start the inspector, run npx at model context protocol slash inspector. After a minute, it will start up and then automatically go to the inspector. So go ahead and change your transport type here to streamable HTTP and then paste in the URL of your MCP server. And finally, make sure you append MCP to the path. Click connect and you'll be connected to your MCP server. So now we can go over to the tools tab and click list tools. And this will list the two tools that we defined in the MCP server file. So we can go ahead and select a tool here and check to see if digitalocean.com is available. So scrolling down here, we can run the tool and the tool ran uh, successfully and we can see that the status is not available. So we've deployed our MCP server to the cloud and we can use it remotely. Now, how do we use it in something like Cloud Desktop? Well, let's take a look at that now. Go ahead and open up your Cloud Desktop app and then go over here to Search and Tools. In the dropdown, click Manage Connectors and then go ahead and click Add Custom Connector. Here we'll add the name of our MCP server, Domain Checker, and then we'll add the remote MCP server URL. So here we add the link to our server and then again we add MCP to the path here. And then it's confirming that you trust this computer because this connector has not been verified to Anthropic. It's really important to make sure that you trust any MCP server you connect to because ultimately you're giving Claude in this instance authorization on your behalf to execute API calls. So if someone puts up a malicious MCP server that you connect to, they may be able to collect sensitive or personal information about you. In this case, this is our own MCP server, so we know we can trust it. So go ahead and add it. And now the domain checker MCP server is available. So now we can go ahead and ask Claude, is the domain digitalocean.com available? Claude then asked for permission to use this tool. So you can allow this always or allow it once. So I'll go ahead and allow it once here. So there's always a human in the loop when the tool is called. And that's how to deploy an MCP server to the cloud in just a few minutes. If you want more cool MCP content, go ahead and check out our YouTube channel, like this video on Cursor 1.0 and what it means for MCP. Hey everyone, Cursor just dropped their 1.0 update and there's plenty to unpack here. But there were two things that really got my attention from an MCP point of view. One click install button for Cursor and two level control built into Cursor settings. Now, up until now, I've